Today we're gonna make this Japanese inspired sports poster design in Photoshop. Our subject for today is Dylan DeClerc of the Minnesota Windchill. Let's get into it. So I've got my document set up in Photoshop, 1080 by 1350 pixels. These are kind of the standard vertical dimensions for Instagram posts. This is what I normally am designing in. I'm gonna start by dragging in a couple textures to start building our background. I have this bathroom tile texture and this office chair texture that I got from that video I did a while back about textures around the house. And I'm just gonna lower the opacity on these so they can kind of blend together. Let's go 70% on the bathroom tile and then shift this blend mode of the office chair to multiply. And we'll bring this down to maybe 30%. I think I want it a little bit brighter. So maybe let's tone down this tile a bit more to 50%. So like the initial background is just white. Now we kind of have this light gray or off-white. I'm also gonna drop on a selective color layer. This whole canvas, I want to get rid of the whites and shift it more towards like a yellow. And so I'm gonna go down to whites in this drop down and start moving the yellow tone up. And also maybe add a little bit of magenta. I'm just kind of getting this like more realistic paper color rather than pure white. And I'm gonna keep the selective color layer on top of everything. Next up, we're gonna draw out a circle. So if you go to your shape tool, U is the shortcut. You can right click to get to the ellipse tool, click and drag while holding shift to draw out the circle and hit command A to select the whole screen and you can center it using the move tool with these little icons at the top. So I'm just gonna center it vertically and horizontally. And I wanna bring up my grids real quick. Command apostrophe, by the way, is a shortcut for that. You can hit Command T to transform. And I'm gonna scale this down so we're keeping like a, a three box margin from the right and left sides. Gives us a good amount of white space to work with. And this color red, I think I like it as is, but there's some options here. We have the RGB red, which is kind of as harsh a red as you can choose. There's also some things in the light drop down here in the swatches. You could do like a light red or maybe a pure red is better. That might've been what I had before, but to me that, that feels like the right color. Next, we're gonna drag in our cutouts. So I have these cutouts of Dylan DeClerc, which I already removed the background from the original photos, but just dragging this one in, we can align this with the bottom. I wanna make sure his head is also keeping that same three box margin at the top. So that is pretty good to me. Now I'm just using this big cutout for the silhouette, so we can make this entirely black. Few ways to do that. One, you can go into your effects, drop a color lay over the layer and set that to black. You could also like make a new layer, fill it with black and then clip it to your layer. We'll go with this for now. And next we're gonna drop on our smaller cutout. So again, I've pre cut this out. Let's again, align this with the bottom. And for the effect on this smaller cutout, I'm gonna use the threshold adjustment. So if you go to your adjustment layers, go to thresholds, we can clip this threshold so it's only affecting our small cutout by holding option, hovering in that space and clicking. And you can see how this cutout has like a soft rim light just on this right edge. And this might have just been from my imperfect cutout, but I want to make sure that we can distinguish like this slight stroke around his whole body. So to do that, we're going to drop on an inner stroke. You go to your effects, select stroke, and however many pixels you want. I think three is good. We can hit okay and see how it like, it's, it's also on the bottom edge. I'm just gonna move this cutout down a few notches with the arrow keys. So that feels better. Next up, we're gonna add some smaller elements around the perimeter of the design. So I'm just gonna group my layers real quick. Let's call this small cutout, big cutout. And we'll separate out the background as well. We'll just use these textures as the background layers. But back to these small elements, let's make a new layer. T for your type tool. Let's use black as our text color and just click once. Font we're gonna use today is called Carol Gothic Regular. And we can, basically I'm gonna type out his first and last name and we're gonna position it in different parts of the design. So starting with his first name, let's go with a vertical type style. Dylan, maybe we blow this up to 50 for the font size and we can increase the spacing just in our character panel here, something like this. And for this text, we said the three box margin for the circle, let's use like a two box margin for the text. 
and duplicating this, Command J, you can drag it over on this side. I think I wanna pick up where this one leaves off as far as the vertical placement. You can drag it over here to line it up and then holding Shift, you can drag it straight across. Shift is just gonna keep it in a straight line for you. Maybe we want a one box margin, actually. So let's move this one over as well. And for the second Dylan, we're gonna type his last name, De Clerk and probably a bit too much spacing between letters because we're blending into our cutout here. So let's reduce that. Couple more text detail elements. This is something I was doing occasionally in this poster design challenge I just got through. Using the player's number to kind of guide these miscellaneous elements that we're putting on the outside. So actually let's Command J duplicate this to clerk again. For this one, I'm gonna type out a bunch of periods. Let's do five periods, one, two, three, four, five hit return, and then do four periods, one, two, three, four, for the number 54. Gonna decrease the spacing between lines so it looks more put together. And this one, we're gonna keep that same one box margin from the right, and we'll use a two box margin from the top. And we can duplicate this layer, move it over down here. And for this one, let's do one, two, three, four, five, two returns, one, two, three, four. So same concept, number 54. So we're gonna do five and then four. And just spacing those out, we'll drag these back up to, again, maintain that same one box margin. Maybe this one we move down a little bit more. I just realized we wanna change the spacing again to make sure the last name picks up where the first name leaves off. So you can Bring this back up and move it back over. So this is basically it for the composition. Now comes the fun part of like overlaying a bunch of textures and really making it come to life and giving it some character. So we're gonna do this in a variety of ways. I wanna start by going to our big cutout and we're just gonna do a displacement map on this to kind of roughen up the edges. If you go up to filter, distort, displace, we can, I don't know, just do something subtle like five and five to start. We'll hit OK, and now this is gonna displace this image based on whatever texture or image you choose. As long as it's a PSD file, it won't work otherwise. Let's use this rough grunge texture, and you can see it just kind of roughened up all the edges, made it feel a little bit imperfect. It's a little bit extreme for me. I think three is probably a better route. So that's with the, the three displacement. Let's do the same thing for this circle in the background. I'm gonna convert this for smart filters by going up to filter, convert for smart filters. And then you can honestly just click and drag while holding option, this same smart filters displacement map onto the ellipse. So you can see it roughened up those edges. Now, if we wanted them even rougher, which I think I did in the initial composition, let's displace them by like some bigger numbers, 30 and 15, and just see what happens. Again, rough grunge is what we'll use. So that kind of gives it a, a lot more sort of faded texture on the outside. But you'll see it also shifted it towards the right. So I just want to recenter it and still maintain that three-ish box margin that we set out to do for that circle. All the text elements, we can kind of group those together and do a similar displacement on. So I'm just gonna group these into a folder, we'll call it text. Let's convert this for smart filters, this folder, and let's drag on the same displacement map that we did for the big cutout onto our text. So holding option, click and drag these smart filters up to the text, and you'll see it just kind of distorted the dots. Text got a little bit tough to read, but I think it's okay when you're all the way zoomed out. I mean, it's sort of a within the style that it's not gonna be super easy to read. I think that's part of why this graphic turns out cool. And you can still have the last name on the jersey of the small cutout, which we can also throw a displacement map on that as well. So again, holding option, click and drag the smart filters up to our small cutout. And I think that's a little too distorted. So let's drop this down to like, I don't know, let's just do one in each direction. Rough grunge. Okay, so that's a little before and after, just kind of a subtle shake texture. The other thing we can do is start masking out bits of our elements. So like specifically the big cutout and the circle background. I'm gonna take, let's see what texture do I have? I have this swirl wall texture. Gonna blow up, just kind of a, you know, another rough gritty texture. Let's drop, uh, an adjustment layer gradient map on this. And we'll go with black to white. We can just increase the contrast so we're getting more white showing through. And then we're basically gonna use this white to mask out or erase 
parts of those other layers. So let's start with something like this. Now, if you hit Command A to select the whole screen, then Command C to copy. I'm gonna turn that off for now. Let's go to our ellipse first. We'll drop a mask on there with the mask icon. And now if you hold Option and click on this white mask on the thumbnail, now we're looking at the mask. So now when we Command V, we're dropping on this black and white mask to this ellipse, which it's gonna take out all the parts that are black and it's gonna show all the parts that are white. So right now, Obviously, most of this is black, so that's all that's showing through the ellipse. If we invert this with Command-I, that is gonna just take out bits of it that are in the black part. And now with the big cutout, I don't wanna use the same exact mask, so let's tweak this thing a little bit. Maybe we, I don't know, Command-T to transform. We can rotate it and scale it up some, just so we have a slightly different effect going on with the big cutout. Maybe we can move it over this way. I'll command A, command C to copy, and then again, dropping a mask on our big cutout. Let's hit option, click that thumbnail, command V, and we've pasted on this mask, and now we'll invert it, command I, so we just get some of this effect showing through. And this might be too harsh for your liking. You can always adjust the density. If you drop that down, it'll make it bleed through a little bit less. You're kind of filling it in. You're basically turning this black into a gray on the mask so it doesn't completely erase your subject. I think something around there feels okay and then you can always paint back in parts if it feels like it erased too much. I would recommend using like a rougher brush. I've got this like charcoal pencil that I think everyone should have in Photoshop but let's see if we paint in white that'll just start to bring back parts of our initial silhouette. Let's take that initial selective color layer we made, which by the way, again, this was coloring everything, taking the whites, moving them more towards the yellow, so you can turn this off and on and see what it's doing. I just think it warms up the whole thing with the yellow. Let's drop this into its own folder, call it finishing, and we can drop in a couple more textures on top of this whole thing. First, let's use that same rough grunge texture that we've been playing with. So I'm gonna blow that up. We've been using it as a displacement map. Now I'm gonna actually use it as an overlay. I can set the blend mode to soft light. I found looks pretty good with this particular texture. I'm just dropping this opacity down to 50 or so, depending on how much you wanna see it in the background. There's also this paper texture that I have, and we'll blow this up. Set this blend mode to multiply probably, and I'll just drop it below the rough grunge. We can decrease this opacity to, I don't know, I think about 60. Feels right, quick before and after finishing effects. Don't be afraid to stack a bunch of textures on top of each other, just make sure they're blending well. Like we have these two textures on top of everything. We have those initial background textures that just gave us some kind of canvas to work on that wasn't like a perfect white nothingness. Let's finish things off with a camera raw filter on top of everything. If you make a new layer and hit Command, Option, Shift, E, that'll stamp the whole image onto its own layer. Go up to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and then Filter, Camera Raw Filter. These will be our final adjustments. So we'll go in and just kind of tweak things as needed. Maybe we up the exposure. You can play with the contrast too. It's probably not gonna be too significant. I don't like upping the shadows too much. We can go to some texture and clarity. Because everything's sort of two-dimensional, you're not gonna notice significant contrast edits like these but we can pull down the vignetting a little bit on the edges. And I do wanna play with the curve. If you drop a couple points here and just lift the black point, that can kind of give this nice matte finish to the whole thing. Can also add some grain through the effects. So something around 40 feels decent to me. And if the whole thing is feeling a bit bland for you, you can always go to color and play with the vibrance or saturation. You can also adjust the temperature, like if you want this more yellow or maybe even a little bit of the pinks getting in there. But this is really where your creativity comes in to shine. So we'll hit okay and stop there. That's our finished Japanese inspired poster design. I think the big takeaways are really in the simplicity of this approach and then also the texturing. You kind of let the textures become the main thing that draws the eye in and, and gives the image a lot of character. Composition is very simple, obviously. I mean, the player cutouts, you can't even really see or distinguish the features of the players. So have fun with textures. Again, don't be afraid to stack multiple on top of each other. Just make sure everything is blended. Hope this video was helpful and as always, 
guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.